Hey, welcome to Down Earth Astrology and Primal Girl Wellness. I am Miss Jenny and I am your astrologer. So this is just a really quick video. I wanted to have a little bit of a conversation, some feedback from y'all, because I'm sure somebody out there has a lot more information than I do. So I was thinking, I've been, you know, you can't help but be aware of what's going on with um, Ms. Markle and, and Harry. Um, you know, uh, just wow, especially since things are really getting colorful. Um, so podcast heard all I didn't listen to it but I have heard of it news of it um and also his inexplicable South Africa trip without her um and certainly not planned a very spontaneous sort of thing uh last month so I was going back through some old videos and I remember the wedding chart and looking at the wedding chart and some predictions moving forward uh from like spring through the end of the year and i knew we could see in the wedding chart that august was gonna be a big hot month for them and boy has it ever been wow um and i also thought that there was the possibility i wasn't completely sure about that but there was definitely the possibility that a very long distance move uh, was in the cards if they were going to le be leaving Montecito. So clearly they have not moved out of their Montecito mansion yet. However, very, very long distance travel did come up. Um, and I'm thinking specifically about Harry's South Africa trip. Now, stay with me for a second. And I want, I, I really want to hear your thoughts about this because I'm, I, there's a lot I don't know because there's so many ch channels dedicated to just bashing these two. But Here's what I'm thinking. So if Harry and Meghan had a row between them and Harry's like, I've had enough or whatever, who knows, right? And decides, fine, I'm going to South Africa. Um, you know, and he goes to South Africa and maybe even possibly, a little suspicious mind running here, right? Maybe even possibly looking into the possibility of relocating there. Maybe he's had enough of the United States and all their guns and their bad politics, right? And certainly can't go back to England because he's not uh, not in any better shape over there. Um, and if he wants to take the wife and kids, she's certainly not going to be welcome over there. So maybe South Africa, right? You know, seems like a good bet. But if you're Meghan Markle, you're probably not wanting to go to South Africa. You're probably not wanting to go, uh, well, pretty much anywhere except, you know, Hollywood, California, because you want to be a big you know, American celebrity, um, cause it's certainly not going to happen in England. Um, but South Africa, no. And especially not if your ex-girlfriend is there, right? I'm just saying, if it were me, I wouldn't want my husband anywhere near his ex-girlfriend either. And so, hmm, how could we destroy any possibility of, you know, residency or citizenship being offered to my husband? You know, um, how, how could I sabotage that? Well, I suppose I could, you know, I podcast and say all sorts of things that are going to piss off pretty much all of South Africa. And, you know, if I were Meghan Markle and I'm a Hollywood celebrity here in the United States, I wouldn't give a damn about South Africa because pff, who cares, right? So it's not, it's not a loss for her if all of South Africa hates her and says, don't ever come back, whatever that, that uh, South African saying is, vote, vote scoot or something. I don't know. Um... I mean, it's literally no skin off her teeth because when is she ever going to need to go back there? And, you know, that damn ex-girlfriend is, is there too. So to hell with them, right? Um, so there's that. And, but it would certainly put a wrench in Harry's plans because he's definitely not going to have, well, he's going to have a hard time setting foot back there now after, you know, her podcast and basically just pissing off the entire country. So I was thinking about that, right? And then I'm thinking about like all this business with England. Like we know she's in some kind of petty pissing contest with a monarchy in England and definitely all of England now because they've made it very clear they don't like her and they don't want her. So now she has absolutely zero reason to be nice to them because, you know, and again, she's an American celebrity. Like pff, who cares about England, right? You know, in, in, Brit, Brit, British, British pop stars and celebrities and actors and writers want to be here to make the money, right? Um, cause that's the big thing is like when you, when you can make it over here, like you've really made it. And it's only because there's more people and more, more disposable cash floating around to support artists. You know, the thing about it is we do know that as far as, at least as far as writing is going, right. Um, you know, television series, movies and stuff, the British have 
amazing talent, really amazing talent that they give airtime to. And here in the United States with Hollywood, we have amazing garbage we give airtime to. Like, I just, uh, you know, who I don't know who's sleeping with these producers, but wow, right? Talentless hacks. Anyway, um, and oftentimes they'll take British, um, really good British script writing, and they'll, instead of bringing over the cast and all that sort of stuff, they just take it and copy it and present it as their own original stuff to people that don't watch British television. It's pretty sad what goes on in Hollywood, but, you know, it's Hollywood. So all of this is to say that, you know, Britain doesn't really hold a lot of, you know, star power that Megan would be interested in either. Like if she can make it in the United States here in America, she's fine. And that's really all she's worried about. Right. So South Africa, eh, it's got that damn ex-girlfriend. Britain, oh, it's got all those people that hate me. Well, to hell with both of them. So pissing them off, uh, you know, and just generally being, you know, persona non grata is not any skin off the back of her teeth. However, where her husband is concerned, there is the possibility that he might want to go somewhere other than the United States to live. So um, if I were going to burn those bridges for him to make sure it wasn't going to happen, I'm thinking she's probably off to a good start. The other thing I was thinking about is why on earth, given the out of control guns in the United States and the poor, poor political situation we've got here, uh, like, why would anybody want to stay here if they had an opportunity to live anywhere in the world, right? Well, you know, I was thinking about that. And, and also, what happened in New York? I thought she wanted to move to New York. Well, you know, if I'm not mistaken, California has community property laws. And basically in California, if you don't get married with a prenup signed and in hand before you get to the, the altar, half, half, everything you're going to have during this marriage, whether you brought it with you or you, you acquired it after you were married, your partner's going to get half. Community property. Half. Half. Which means that if she and Harry ever divorce, she's going to get half of whatever Harry's got. Literally half of whatever Harry's got. I don't know if that's a mouth anything if it's from overseas or it's in banks overseas. Um, but certainly she will, community property laws, like she will get half without any question. So there's that. And then the other thing too is, well, why wouldn't she want him to go back to Britain. I mean, obviously, other than everybody hates her there, right? Well, the other thing I was thinking about is if these are, in fact, not her biological children, um, and looking at those pregnancy pictures again in those last months of pregnancy, walking around in stiletto heels, and her face was not swollen, and her ankles weren't swollen, and she was wearing stilettos, like there's, I don't know any pregnant women on the planet that in the last trimester did not have big swollen moon faces. Um, and big swollen feet and ankles and were absolutely not teetering around on stiletto heels, risking spraining her ankle, twisting it, falling, tripping, you know, and potentially injuring the baby. So there's, you know, now I'm seeing it. I'm like, oh, that's not right. So I don't think she was ever pregnant either. So that means that if someone else actually had these kids and they're technically not hers, unless she adopted them, right? If Harry came to the UK and brought the kids with him, he could potentially stay there and not go back with them. He could, I'm thinking, I don't know anything about British law, but I'm thinking he could theoretically keep those kids in the UK with him. And she can go back to the Americas because she'll have no legal right to the kids because they're not actually hers. Just a thought, just a thought. So um, it would appear that Megan is trying to burn down all the exits so that Harry has nowhere he can go without her. Um, Cause South Africa is not an option. Going back home has definitely not been an option as far as she's concerned. She's really worked hard at not going back to the UK. You know, the thing about it is Harry is very much a fish out of war. This is a kid who's never had to do anything in his life. Like he's lived in this bizarre alternate reality that nobody else shares. Like unless you're royalty, like how would you, you don't live like that, right? The world doesn't operate like that. So he's like, he's literally like these supermodels are so beautiful. They've never had to actually cook anything and they don't know how to boil water, right? Like helpless like a baby. So, you know, he's completely out of his element. And if he's out in California, which is even more weird, right? Hollywood, man. Um, he is surrounded by people who are as disingenuous and just manipulative and parasitic. Oh my God. Right. So he's literally like a, just a sitting duck, right? Literally it's like taking advantage of him is like taking, taking candy from a baby. 
So um, he's got huge learning curves in terms of real life functions um, and also real life personalities because he's not protected by anybody that owes him any loyalty. Oh, you're sticking up. Sorry. Um, and so he's going to rely very heavily on her because, you know, he, she at least has some vested interest in his well-being and survival. So, you know, he's going to rely on her to help him navigate these new territories. Um, you know, of course, the problem is she's a first house son, so it's all about her. And she's not even, let me rephrase that. She's not even a first house son. She's a dysfunctional, toxic first house son. So um, everything is always going to be to her benefit and about her always. And, you know, now she's just totally like gone off the reservation. Like, woo, -woo, -woo we don't even know what planet she's on at this point. Um, mm -mm -mm. So I'm, I'm not completely sure what's going on, but it looks to me and your thoughts are appreciated that she may be trying to literally burn the ex burn down the exits before you can get out the gate um, by preventing him from going back to England easily because she might lose her kids and him and in the same breath, right? Um, definitely making sure he never goes back to South Africa because there will, there will be no warm welcome for him there now. Um, and I don't know, I don't know that there's too many other places for them to go, right? So, and not moving to New York uh, instead of staying in California because there is no community property law in New York. So if they get divorced in New York, it's a whole different ballgame, right? Um, and she's not a big fish in a little pond in New York, right? She doesn't have the same star power that she does in Hollywood. Because um, New Yorkers. <laughs> so so I was thinking about that. And the other thing I was thinking about, there's a lot of, I mean, you know, Harry draws a lot of sympathy. Um, you know, and that's not unexpected. We all feel for him because she's a very domineering personality um, and she clearly knows a lot more about how the world operates than he does so you know we can all see it's kind of like a you know babe in the woods here but um you know i was thinking about it tonight i was watching a video and listening to someone talk about harry and and framing him as a victim right you know he's a victim of megan he's a victim of megan i'm hearing a lot of people um portray harry or perceive harry as a victim of her evil wiles and he, I, and I'm going to end this video. I want to give you a story, right? So this is a real life story. So once upon a time, I knew a woman who was a first house son, um, who was married to a man, um, who had five kids from previous marriage so, and she had three. Uh, so here's the thing though, right? I mean, people with first house sons can be extremely charming. They can be extremely charming. They're very magnetic. They're, they're the kind of personalities that pull people to them and they're performers. They love having an audience. Aries first house. You know fire signs um and you know for all intents and purposes she was just wonderful company she was charming she was pleasant she was a lot of fun to listen to you know she's and she was an astrologer um just it was she was just a an intriguing charming woman you know now her husband and his kids she didn't treat very well um i'm not going to get into the details of the household but uh, she, the story is that he was married to one of her coworkers when she met him and her coworker was apparently a big old round heeled, like, uh, what, what do they call them? Slappers, um, who was, you know, partying five kids, five kids. And she's partying and has her boyfriend living in the basement of the house and you know this that and the other thing and she's got you know this one the first house son babysitting for her so she can go you know hang out with her boyfriend or whatever and so make somebody else watch the kids while the husband is working right I, it was just a weird thing so of course little miss first house son saw her a meal ticket right and listen don't we can't get too upset with her because there are plenty of people out there who see somebody who's got something to offer and will be anything you want them to be as long as they're getting theirs, right? And with women, you know, especially women who date men with money or date, date, ugh, date men old enough to be their grandfathers, right? Yeah, because I'm so sure you're attracted to that. Um, you know, and then have these babies. They're not having these babies because they're so in love with Mr. Moneybags. They're having these babies because babies are insurance policies, Let's not get it twisted. So, you know, for her at her socioeconomic level, like he was, it's the same thing, right? Here's somebody with resources and I want those resources. And she clearly isn't interested in taking care of her, her resources or guarding the property. So 
let me just help myself here. So she basically manipulated the situation, got in good with the husband, helped him get divorced, um, and then became the second wife and stepmother to his children and brought her children along and became literally the wicked stepmother to his kids. Her children, she spoiled rotten, but to his children, she was awful. She was awful. We all saw the way she talked about them, the way she talked to them, the way she treated them. And also she did the same thing to him. So she would literally, she was a housewife. She didn't have to work. She quit working as soon as she married him because, you know, she had to take care of the kids, but then she would make him get up, you know, at five in the morning to get all those five children together to drive them all to school and drop them off before he had to go to work. And then he'd have to pick them up and bring them home. And she was home all day taking care of the house. Um, and mostly it was just to keep him busy and tied up so she knew where he was at all times but it was not it, it was jesus it was not good um so the more you watch this the more disgusted you became and the more like oh my god right like i just wow how do, and at first it's like well how does he put up with this and you know because she's so awful she's so mean she's such a predator you know and all this horrible stuff but here's the thing that i would say and this is what i said um, towards the end of those friendships, like I couldn't watch them anymore. You know, as bad as she is, and make no mistake about it, she was awful. She was righteously awful. Like she was just one hot breath away from being a stepmother that should be in jail, right? She was not a good person by any stretch of imagination. Oh my God. But at the same time, these are his kids. He's a grown man. He could easily, at any point during that relationship, said, enough is enough. We're not doing this anymore. Stop this. He could have stood up for himself. And more importantly, he could have stood up for those kids, but he didn't. He didn't. He cowed to her every single time for everything. And he milked this whole martyr thing, this martyr identity. Oh, poor me. Oh, she's so awful. Look, you know, look at how she abuses me. He milked that for all the sympathy it was worth. Basically by, you know, trying to be super nice guy and not defending himself and saying, well, you know how she is and she gets what she wants, blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, I think of him a lot when I think of these situations, right? Because we like to vilify the women and make the women just horrible. And again, she was horrible. But at the same time, we write a blank check for the male partners. Like, you know, they're so victimized by this evil woman. And the fact of the matter is, you're a grown ass man. Hello, do you have a set of balls? Would you like to borrow mine? Perhaps you'd like to borrow my backbone. Maybe a couple vertebrae, just saying, right? You got kids depending on you and you can't even stand up for them, but you want me to feel sorry for you? Really? So I was thinking about that and then I was thinking about Harry and I'm like, you know what? At any given time, Mr. Hiding in the Shadows, not daring speak or say a word, you know, never complain, never confess. Um, you know, he could he could easily put his foot down, you know, or something or something and certainly make a much greater effort at reining in the queen of terror, you know, and bad PR spin. Um, because now she's just making a joke out of both of them. Like they're literally both becoming a mockery because of her nonsense, but he doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. He could, he's a grown man. She's not holding a gun to his head, but he chooses to take the path of least resistance and do nothing, nothing. So, uh, I don't feel really bad for Harry. I don't think he's a victim in this relationship. He's just as much of a volunteer and a participant as she is. So, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure you guys thought about that as well, because I, I don't like giving people a free pass for things when they could easily take responsibility for themselves, you know, and their contribution, even if it's a contribution from doing absolutely nothing about something. So there you go. So we still have some time left in here. I really... I'm really wondering if the queen is going to make it uh, through the year. Um, and I also wonder how this is going to affect his mental health. It can't be good right now. It can't be good. Um, you know, and little Miss Moffat there is, you know, riding her top to what she thinks is, you know, f fame and glory. And all she's doing is just literally making a mockery out of both of them. Golly, day, could she dig that grave any deeper for their reputations? So, um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you guys know any more than I do about the, about these two and what's going on. And if there, if anybody knows anything about British law and, um, 
parental rights, right? So, or, or even the royal family, like if these are his kids through a surrogate and not hers, and they he brings those kids to England, can she fight to take those kids back or fight for visitation? Because technically she's not their parent, right? Um, she, and she would certainly have to show adoption papers, which, you know, nobody's seen. Um, and that would, that would really like just kind of damn the whole ship, right? Um, and also, too, the whole South Africa thing. Like, he goes to South Africa, like, completely spontaneously, out of nowhere, like, in the middle of August, which covers the long-distance traveling and trip we saw. And But it didn't cover the relocation. Remember, I said there might be a problem with citizenship, but it would be a problem on his end. But, you know, we don't know, right? But if that's the case, maybe it was South Africa and there was an issue with that, right? Being a, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Maybe you do. Um, and then, of course, the next week, she's, you know, literally pissing off all of South Africa on her podcast because, boy, that's one way to make sure he's not invited back because, you know, the ex-girlfriend is there. So that's it. Just some musings I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any thoughts, uh, please by all means put them in the comment section below. I'd love to have this conversation so I don't feel like I'm going crazy. Uh, and we'll see what happens next.